Welcome back. Last month, Women of Will made its off-Broadway debut at the gym at Judson in Greenwich Village. This theatrical event features an exploration of the female characters in the Shakespearean canon. It was developed over a 15-year period by Tina Packer, the founding artistic director of Shakespeare and Company in Lenox, Massachusetts. This epic journey is performed by Packer herself, opposite actor Nigel Gore. Contributing correspondent Patrick Pacheco recently got the chance to chat with Packer and Gore about women of will. If you would call me Rosalind and come to my coat and woo me. But now by the faith of my love, I will. Where is it? Well, go with me, and I'll show it you. And along the way, you can tell me whereabouts in the forest you live. <laughs> well, where you go? With all my heart, fair use. Nay, you must call me Rosalind. Welcome, Tina. Welcome, Nigel, to On Stage. And congratulations on a most entertaining and most informative epic. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, one of the great of many scenes that you do, obviously, is from Taming the Shrew. Yes. And Sir Anthony Quayle, a great actor, once called it a most hateful play. Was he wrong? No, he's not. I'm with him. I think it is. <laughs> and we play it hatefully. I mean, Nice oh, strikes yeah. me around with a collar around my neck. And, and, um, but we do, we do... No, I think it's one of the things that you see about Shakespeare is that he actually thought it was a happy ending, you know. Uh -huh. But in, with our consciousness, we think it's repulsive. And Anthony Quayle was right. And Nigel, is um, Petruchio just a misogynistic bully? I, I, yeah, um, <laughs> Tina says he's a psychological bully. I think I use rather stronger terms, which we probably shouldn't repeat on TV. But, well, if uh, they're not, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we you can know. use our imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he's odious. Yes. I really do. And actually, I said last night on stage, just you know, we were digressing, and I said, you know, it, it's easier to play people like you know Macbeth and Richard the Third who kill children than it is to play someone like Petruchio for me, you know, I just don't quite get, I don't quite get him. It's hard to inhabit that kind of misogynism, mm -hmm. you know, misogynistic and yet, behavior. And yet Shakespeare, it seemed to me in the course of the evening that I saw, uh, seemed like a real feminist. I think he was. Ultimately. I think, I, I, I think he began off not as a feminist at all. He's projecting on women. They're either viragos or they're sweet little virgins on the pedestal. You know, he's, you know, he's a kid. He's projecting on women. <laughs> he doesn't really understand women. Uh, but by the time he gets to the end of his life, he's saying, guys, if we don't, if we don't follow the women, if we don't do, uh, run our lives the way women run their lives, we're going to be in real trouble. I think he ended up as a real feminist. The body language in the course of the evening also is that you're on top. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, how is it to play scenes when you're on the bottom? It's really fun. <laughs> it's always lovely to look up because you've got somewhere to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> Does it inform the way you play the scenes, actually the physical uh, positioning that your director has or you came up with? Um, no, I think it just, actually, I, I just think Shakespeare himself wrote quite a few scenes where, like with Joan of Arc, she ends up on top, like yeah. Margaret of Anjou, she ends up on top. Mm -hmm. You know, Kate didn't end up on top, but, but I think a lot of the things uh, he was interested in was who's on top. You know, <laughs> he really was interested in that. Why do you suppose that he had women um, dresses men in order to be truth tellers, as you say in the course of the play. Well, they live underground, is what I say, because it, the, although there was a queen on the throne for much of Shakespeare's writing life, women didn't have voices in the same kind of way. I mean, they really didn't. You know, they were subservient. There was even a debate about whether the women had their own souls or whether they belonged to their husbands or their fathers, you know. And, and you couldn't own your own property or anything like that unless you were a widow. It always belonged to the man. So I think that the um, he sudden he became conscious that one women are just as intelligent if not more intelligent than men and two that they've been put in this totally untenable position and no wonder some of them become nuns so that uh. they can have freedom you know or dress as men so that they can say what they want and everybody's going to listen to them and you might notice in all the plays where the women dress as men it all turns out terribly well <laughs> they organize everybody they live underground and it all 
all turns out <laughs> terribly well. <laughs> Nigel, in the course of doing this epic work, what have you learned about the women of Shakespeare? Oh, my goodness. Uh, just an immense power, an immense power, and Im a deep intelligence, and, a, and a, just a vast emotional intelligence on top of that as well. I mean, intellect, emotional intelligence. It, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. Uh, you, when you start stacking them up next to each other, you know, Viola, Olivia, Rosalind, you know, Lady M. It's, it's phenomenal. We have to wrap up, but I wanted to ask you, that you have a lovely scene of Romeo and Juliet, of course. Yes. And you're both of a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to ask you if you had to sort of, if you could bring the wisdom of your years to those scenes, or if you had to sort of just let that go and recover your 20-something selves to well, play those I, scenes. I don't know about you, Nigel, but I feel I can play the scene now, and when I was 24 and I was dying to play the scene, I don't think I had the ability. I don't know that I had the, I, maybe I had the intelligence, but I didn't have the facility to do her swift changes of thought, and I didn't have the humility to allow myself to feel all the things she feels. So I feel as if I can play it now, and I probably couldn't have when I was the right age. I don't yeah. know. And I mean, the things that they say are, are absolutely profound. That's what I realized when I first started doing the scene. You know, the stuff that comes out of their mouths is absolutely extraordinary. And I think, you know, you need to have had your butt kicked by love, really, to, to go that deep, you know, into yeah. what they're saying. I'm not sure they have a clue of the import of the things that they say because there's so much in love and it's just flowing out. But, um, but for me, you know, at my certain age, you know, <laughs> it's a joy to play. Yeah, it's a joy to it. play. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, if you want to get your butt kicked with great art, go see <laughs> the, the Women of Will. Congratulations yes. to you both. Thank and, you. Thank uh, you so much. Enjoy the rest of the run. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, Fred. And you can catch Women of Will at the gym at Judson in Greenwich Village through June 2nd. Okay, it's time for...